Hey everybody and welcome to part four of core fundamentals of web development. In this video we're going to go ahead and create our form to let users add a link. Alright so let's go ahead and dive in. I want to take a look at what the finished example looks like and it's this form right here. It's It's got a title here for add link. It's got a title property in the form, a URL property in a form and then a categories that's comma separated and we'll, we'll talk, we'll have a whole video dedicated to doing comma separated input from a user. And then it's got a submit button and a cancel button and they've got a little bit here of hover state changes where it's changing color as we hover and notice they also have our cursor pointer so that we know that we can click on these as buttons as well. Now when we start off it's not going to have this fancy animation, it's not going to pop out on top, we're actually as we start off it's just going to sit right here on top of the list of links so that's what we're going to work on first. So I try to have a couple of resources for you guys going forward as we're, we're working on each section. So one of, the, one of my main resources that I use uh, for reference for almost everything is W3Schools. Now you can go to the MDN documents for uh, Mozilla Developer Network for uh, documentation on everything web development. That's pretty good. I mean obviously it's, it's kind of the core documentation that you can reference. For simple stuff, I use W3Schools all the time and there's this one one um, one article here that talks about styling forms. You can kind of see uh, the things that you need to do to style them, and that's what we're going to kind of walk through and do ourselves. All right, so let's pop over. We've got our placeholder here for our add link panel, and it's got a class of panel, and, and panel is going to be something that we reuse for different elements, kind of like container. It's also a bootstrap class, so if you're using bootstrap or something similar, you've probably seen something similar to what we're going to do with this panel class. So hopefully when you guys see it in the future, if you haven't seen it before, you've seen it now and you'll have a good idea of what it is going forward. So we're going to need to add a couple of different things in here. First of all, we're going to just add an H3 and that's going to have a class of panel heading. So this is going to be the title or the heading for our panel and it's going to be add link. And then we're going to create our form with an ID of add link form. Now I hope you guys are picking up on some of this, these MN abbreviations. You don't have to use these. You can pause the video and copy and, and, and copy from the source code if you want to. But these are going to be super helpful as you get forward, go forward doing more web development. So I hope you guys uh, kind of try to use these going forward. So by default we get an action in our form. We're not going to do an action. We're actually going to override what happens by default when you submit a form. So we're not going to need our action there. Now inside of this form we're going to have several different inputs. So we're going to have an input of type text. The first one is going to be for our title. So we'll have a name of title. We'll have an ID of link title. We'll have a class of form control. And again, this is something you'll see in Bootstrap that's actually used a lot. And then we'll have a placeholder of title. So this is basically going to the text that's displayed before someone enters something. So if we save this. It's not going to look pretty. It actually looks pretty bad. Uh, but you see the placeholder title and it goes away when I start typing. So we're basically going to do the same thing for uh, the three other ones and something useful in Visual Studio Code and a couple of some some other editors as well. If I hold down Shift and Alt or Option and then do a arrow down, I can get copies of these. I'll just go in and edit these for URL and categories. All right, so I've got all of these inputs in here. Got my title. URL and then categories for comma separated and I can make this box a little bit bigger so that these you can actually see the entire content. So we've got all three of these on the same line. They look terrible. Uh, so let's go ahead and now we've got just a couple of more things to add in here. One is going to be our div that holds our link category. So if I come back and I add a link and I start typing in this comma separated input, notice I get these red boxes here that show the links that we've or the categories that we've already added. That's going to be a div. We're going to put a placeholder there. We're not going to use it yet, but we'll just put the placeholder. So it's going to be a div with a with an ID of added category. So these are the categories that the user is current has already added. And then lastly, we're going to have two buttons, and they're actually going to be input with a type of submit. Value on the first one is going to be submit, and it's going to have an ID, and you'll see why we need an ID later on, not too long from now. And then I'm going to copy and paste that and the second one is going to be cancel button and then its value is going to be canceled. So we should see now we've got all of our elements here. 
We've got our three inputs, we've got our two buttons, and then we've got a div, just a placeholder for our added categories. So next up is to go ahead over to our CSS and start to style these things. And the first thing we want to work on is our panel. So let's do a section here for panel. And I'm going to select the panel class, so dot panel. And we're going to do a couple of different things here. And I'm going to kind of save these after each element so we can see what's going on. So let's set the background to white. This will give it a little bit of contrast between it and the background of the body. We're going to do a border radius of five pixels. Save that. And we'll see a little bit of see a little bit of curvature to the edges there. Then we're going to do a box shadow, and I'm a big fan of box shadows in in a lot of situations. I think they give pretty cool effects. And I'm going to type this out here, and then I will let you guys know what I'm doing. So the way box shadow works, let's go ahead and pull open our panel here. And we're going to do some editing right here in the uh, in the elements tab of the console. Uh, and what I want to take a look at is the box shadow. So the way box shadow works is you've got an X offset or horizontal out, horizontal offset, X offset, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so if I start typing in numbers, this is just going to push the shadow to the right for positive X values and to the left for negative X values. Then we'll get a similar thing for Y. So positive is actually going to be down. Notice that moving down there. Negative is going to be up. All right. We just want to leave that at zero. And then three is going to be the blur. So it's basically going to be how many pixels does it take for this thing to blur out. So three is relatively small. One would basically just be kind of similar to what a, what a border of one pixel would be. And then as I start making this bigger, notice the blur gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So you can see it takes however long this long for the blur to actually go all the way away. So I'm going to do this as three pixels. I think that gives kind of a clean... It's got a little bit of a blur, but it also looks pretty clean, so I like that. So we're going to leave that there. Then we're going to add a little bit of padding. So this is going to be 40 pixels on the top, 20 pixels on the on the right, 20 pixels down on the bottom, and 20 pixels on the left. Save that, and now we're starting to get somewhere. We've got a little bit of padding in here. We've got uh, box shadow to separate it and the color here to separate it from the background. And the last thing I want to do for our panel is give it a margin of 10 pixels. And then we'll jump on to the panel heading. So we'll do a font size of 24. Save that. Looks a little bit bigger there. We'll do a margin bottom of 10 pixels. So this is going to push down this content a little bit, give it some space. And then we'll do a color of main gray. Now main gray is going to be what we use for most of the text that we use here. And that's, that's what we're using right here as well. So there's our panel. Again, these things are going to be reused across uh, different scenarios. And next up is going to be our form. So I'm going to copy in a form section here. And we've really just got the class of form control. And we're going to do similar things to what we saw with our panel. Um, we're going to do some border radius, padding, font size, stuff like that. But what we're going to start with is width of 100%. So we want these things to go all the way across and kind of stack up on top of each other. Then we'll do a margin of eight pixels on top and bottom and then zero left and right. So spread them out a little bit. We'll do a height of 34 pixels. Save that. Now it's a little bit, a little bit taller. Give border radius to be five pixels. Now it should match kind of what we see here. Now we've got this little inset color that I really don't like. So we're going to replace that with a border of one pixel solid and then main gray as well. And now the inset goes away. And we're going to do some padding. So five pixels on the top, 15 pixels on the left and right. And font size of 14 pixels and then color of main gray. So say that now we're actually looking pretty decent. And we're getting close to what, what our end goal is. The last thing we need to do is style our buttons. And I'm going to do a button section here. You can kind of break down sections any way you want. So in our button section, we want to style anything that's an input with a type of submit. So type equals submit. Now you could, you could uh, do a type of text, a type of date, any kind of input any kind of uh, property on an HTML element you could you could use in here as part of your selector. 
but we're gonna do an input type of submit or a button, so comma is gonna be an or. And then we're gonna do very similar stuff again, so padding, it's gonna be eight pixels, top bottom, 22 pixels, left and right. Border radius is five pixels. Border is one pixel solid main accent color, or excuse me, main accent. There we go. Let's take a look. Those are looking a little bit better. We can probably, let's change the background color. Not clip, second time I've done that. Background color is gonna be our main accent again. So there we go, we've got our red button and we're gonna change our color to be our light accent color. So it's basically a white, but a little bit off. There we go. And last thing we'll do is bump up that font size to 16 pixels. So there we go, so those buttons are looking basically like what we have in our finished product right here. Except we need to go ahead and change these colors when we hover. So for our selectors, I'm gonna select both of these same things. So I'm gonna copy them down here and then do a hover for each one. So when we hover on any of these elements, we're gonna set that cursor to pointer. So again, this just gives the user an idea that we're actually changing or we're able to click on something. Color, we're gonna inverse the color so it's gonna be main, accent, and then background is gonna be white. So now we see you hover over here and it should toggle those colors and just kind of give the user good feedback that there's something that we can change. All right, so we've got our form looking pretty much like we have in the end here. We're gonna have to add some extra functionality to do our comma separated input, which we'll do soon. But we've got our form basically the way we want it, so that's gonna wrap up this video and we're gonna go ahead and dive into the next one, so I'll see you guys there.